I'm going to quickly show you the cabling functionality inside of E3 Wireworks. Here we're working with hierarchical blocks. These can be any subsystem that needs to be interconnected. Within the library, we're going to browse to a connector, and you can see a nice preview of what that connector looks like, as well as a listing of all the pins. Connectors can be placed as a complete full connector just by dragging and dropping, or they can be placed as individual pins by right-clicking, place a single pins. The hierarchical blocks can also be split just by right-clicking split block to put into another location. This can be quite handy if pins need to be split up, whether they're for incoming and outgoing signals. We'll notice that E3 Wireworks constantly is doing quality checks as well. We'll notice that the pins cannot be on another subsystem because that wouldn't make sense. Of course, the systems need to stick together. So we can put them together on the other half of that existing block. Let's place another connector here. In this case, we'll notice that the different symbols are used to represent that this is a, a female connector as opposed to a male. A great deal of the connection can be done simply by box selecting the area. Anything that's horizontal will automatically be interconnected and the associated mating connector will be added. In this case, we'll notice that the DT046P matches up with the 6S. Other interconnection can happen quite quickly just by box selecting, turning corners when desired, and attaching at other ends of the connection. Single connections can just happen with the single connection tool to turn whichever corner you like and connect onto another connector. Wires can easily be applied by browsing within a wire group, picking out the color and size of wire that you like, and then you can connect the wire continuously throughout all of the areas. And there you can see that we're applying the color the diameter as well as the signal is being called out in a single go. You can also apply complete cables to a selection as well. In this case, because I have a 12 pin connector going to a 12 pin connector, what I can do is take a standard 12 core conductor or 12 core cable and apply it to this area. Wires and cables that are being created can be managed within your design tree. Here we have all of our individual conductors that were applied at the top that you can see just by double clicking which one's which, as well as what's being interconnected. And we also have a couple preset cables with their conductors that are within shielding as well. New cables can easily be added either as overbraids or as empty cables. For the two 12 core cables, I'll put those in the overbraid W3 and the core is one through 10. I'm gonna put in a new, new wire harness W4. And there you can see them all contained. Twisted pairs or shielding can easily be added just by right clicking and dragging wires as part of that pair. And if we wanted to represent that graphically, we can auto place the bundles. For the first example I created with just the individual conductors, I'm gonna create an example or a quick manufacturing drawing within E3 Wireworks itself. To do that, I'm gonna place a new device view we also have the option to place single pins and use the active pin terminal if you want to see the contents of inside of an individual connector. And in this case, I'll just place the end connector. So there are the individual pins within the other connector. Starting at these fanned out pins, let's go and create some connection just by dragging them off the side and then snapping them all to the center one. And we'll notice that the individual pins will go and change their angle automatically. When working within this form board environment, we do have the option to select a specified length. So we can say that all of these need to be two inches in length, and then we can right click 
and adjust them automatically to that exact two inches, and then they'll change color to indicate that they are indeed two inches long. This can if segments need to be extended, again, you can right click, adjust segment length, and anything to the right side will automatically shift over. Getting some length information off of here just can be clicked quickly with the measure tool. And we also have some uh, great capabilities with following a path. Selecting the two endpoints of a more complex path will create a dimension tool that actually follows along. Common forms of documentation include labels, which can just be dragged onto your design. And then of course, the text can be filled in with whatever you like. Uh, cable ties are quite common as well, just dragged and dropped onto your design as well. And a bill of material can also be created by dragging on the symbol and then launching the bill of materials tool. Balloon numbers are called out and the bill of materials is complete with all of the cable information, uh, cable ties and all the connectors. One thing to note is of course, calling out all the active mating pins within those connectors as well. Exactly what's required to make sure your bill of materials is ordered accurately. If the lengths or space requirements of the cabling is unknown, it may be a consideration to move the information over to SOLIDWORKS simply by importing and exporting the route. The route information can be leveraged using the start by from to. Select the XML file that E3 created and SOLIDWORKS will prompt you to start placing the components. Paying attention to the device designation, you'll know which one needs to be connected to what and then we can go and select where they need to be connected into our design. Now that all the components are placed, we can start routing and all of the logic from within E3 Wireworks will carry over directly to SOLIDWORKS. We can use the guidelines and group items together simply by box selecting and merging. And then we can reroute the route through individual axes. Once the route's been completed, there's a variety of options for the documentation. When flattening the route, we have two main areas or two main methods that can be used for flattening, an annotation method and a manufacturing method. The annotation method is using straight angles and is very flexible with the position of components. It is of course not to scale. The other method using the flatten route is the manufacturing method. In this method you select which segment in the middle you'd like to keep straight and E3 will flatten it to true scale. You may wish to do some manipulation of the route which can easily be done by editing the route and selecting a segment and doing whatever you need to do. In this case, I can bend the entire route, depending on where the position is that the bend point happens. I can also take a segment and bend it further, or take a segment and straighten it out. When you're happy with your flattened route, a manufacturing drawing can be created. Simply hit the flattened route, select what aspects of the manufacturing drawing you'd like, and select OK. This will lay it on a 2D piece of paper and also put a table for each connector as well as a bill of materials. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of using E3 Wireworks for doing cable documentation and to touch on some of the integration with SOLIDWORKS. Feel free to email me at eric.vanessen at javelin-tech.com.